In breaking news, a tsunami warning has been issued by the Ministry of Civil Defence and Emergency Management. It was at a depth of 25 to 33 kilometres and located 970 kilometres from Great Barrier Island. We have issued a national warning due to an earthquake in the Kermodex Trench area. Emergency services do not have an estimate of the number of fatalities, but the number is expected to be substantial and likely to rise. Our wave height is expected to be 3 to 5 metres. Our objective is to save lives. Tsunami activity has been recorded or detected in the following areas as of 3.30 this afternoon. The Chatham Islands, Gisborne, New Plymouth, Napier, Whanganui, Wellington, Nelson, Westport, Greymouth, Littleton, Norfolk Sound, Dunedin. What we've seen is the fact that agencies are fully committed into this because they understand the risk is real. They understand that in order to make sure that we have an effective response and recovery, that we're all ready. It's critical. The reality is that translates to people's lives being saved and the prevention of injury. Very quickly after we heard that the earthquake had hit, we used um, our modelling data and we did find out very quickly afterwards that there was a tsunami on the way. So we know that about 120,000 people may need to be evacuated in a pretty short period of time. It's a wave with 100 kilometres of energy behind it, so very, very destructive. It is the most significant wave ever to hit Auckland in recorded history. Initial notification that public messaging went out really, really quickly. And for me, that's what's going to save lives. We'd have to start set up a logistics capacity. I anticipate we'll be getting all sorts of requests for support and offers of assistance. As Australia and New Zealand have a very close relationship, uh, we've been offering international offers of assistance. A national state of emergency has been declared. Uh, we have asked people to evacuate, but the immediate priority is for yourselves and for your neighbours. Thank you. In breaking news, a tsunami warning has been issued by the Ministry of Civil Defence and Emergency Management. The warning covers New Zealand's coastal areas and the Chatham Islands. Please share this information with family, neighbours and friends, listen to the radio and TV for updates and follow instructions of local civil defence authorities. In discussion with the Mayor about a declaration of emergency that's been overtaken um, by a national declaration uh, made out of Wellington by uh, the government. Uh, that's very helpful to us because we now have the ability to access um, authorities under the senior legislation. We can compel people to evacuate, we can close areas. We will be able to start looking at what closures we might need now that we've got the declaration, um, particularly in terms of protecting key infrastructure. We've done some analysis on what existing civil defence centres can't be used now, given the evacuation zones, what can be used, and we've got a list of that. We've just had um, information through the wave has hit Omaha. As soon as more information comes through with regards to the uh, impact in Omaha, we'll wake up. The other um, impacts are literally minutes away. What is the predicted wave like for Auckland? 3.5 metres to 7.5 metres. Some very sophisticated modelling tools here in Auckland Civil Defence, um, which allowed us to um, determine where those waves were likely to hit, what their likely effects would be, um, and the number of people who are in those areas. Social media is extremely busy at the moment. We're receiving information through social media and providing it to our intelligence teams. Now, we will need to talk about potential for a media conference or stand up at some stage in the future. In the recovery, just think of the scale. You know, the people affected by this tsunami are more than in just about every district council in New Zealand. The scale of Auckland is our challenge. Okay, thank you. Obviously the primary concern is response, so people are getting out there and they're trying to, to, to fix the problems as they come up.
also what infrastructure is likely to need to be reconstructed and repaired. We're communicating with um, our people who are staffing our civil defence centres. We're trying to figure out which civil defence centres are available. Many of our stations in Nelson Bays are actually going to be inundated by this, uh, by this event. Uh, so we have had to enact our business continuity plans for pretty much every single one of our facilities. We're having to evacuate around about 26,000 people. People are at work, kids are at school, roads are not really designed to, to accommodate that many people moving all at once. And we do have some really great partnerships with our external partners such as the police, fire and ambulance etc. In the affected areas the troops are on the ground assessing the damage and the potential for recovery and rescue. All our staff have been paged to let us know of any update what they see as the way of the area. They can only really evacuate them to where the line is at this stage and then they'll look at relocating them after that point. Yeah, we have three civil defence centres opened up. We have QBE Stadium, Eden Park in the central area and Vodafone Events Centre to the south. If you don't think Wellington's getting enough information that you bring your counterpart in Wellington and talk to them. A tsunami is one of New Zealand's largest life safety risks, so it's very important that we understand as a nation how to respond to and recover from a tsunami event. It's, it's entirely fine for you guys to issue public information that, that relates to your functions. Once again, uh, there's a lot of activity going on. We're doing social media, we're doing Twitter, we're doing our website. Defence Force provides assets and capabilities to support the Government of New Zealand in a response. We're starting to build a picture of what has happened. We've had some tsunami warnings in the past, certainly not at this scale. Um, so this is uh, the largest activation for a tsunami warning we've ever had. So an exercise such as Tangaroa is absolutely invaluable. It builds those networks so that when something goes wrong, we know we can just pick up the phone, talk to people that we've practiced with, and it'll all work. How well prepared is Auckland? Better than we were yesterday. It's such an important um, task to exercise all our functions. The challenge that always happens on the day is that things change, and the ability of the group to um, respond to those changes and I've seen that already on uh, in this exercise today. Fantastic that we do them regularly, um, that we create contacts in all of the different agencies that would be involved with an event like this. You will always learn new things. Um, we found new ways of doing things. It's always good to practice. There's an old adage, train hard, fight easy. Because these events come along so infrequently, the closest we can get is to run an exercise like this um, and, and to run our training. This is bigger than what we've dealt with before. Considering all that, I think it's going pretty well. Preparation pays off. It's good to be able to work with all of these agencies in an exercise scenario so that when we do come together for a real-time emergency, we've established those relationships and knowledge together. The mapping tools and how the forms work, yeah, there's always things we'll learn. It's really important to get the right stuff to the right place at the right time. And that doesn't always happen so easily when you have a major disaster. To get those learnings into our own networks and that, that'll be really useful for us in the long run. We're involving 40-odd uh, agencies across the health sectors, um, always going to give you, you things to improve, but the, the response has been excellent. It's been awesome. Great sense of energy and engagement. That's what this is all about. It's a learning opportunity. This exercise will allow us to sort of identify some lessons and then we can implement that in further work programs across government but also into the next exercises over the coming years. Mm -hmm.